how many plot lines is too many, do you think? Rashomon told a story from three perspectives. Cloud Atlas dragged us through six perspectives. Knives Out riveted us through a whole family of storylines and flashbacks. But today, we're talking about a game that presents us not with just one, not just two, but 13 storylines to be told at once. Whew. Let's link into our mechs and get into it. Welcome to Checkpoint Church, where nerds, geeks, and gamers come together to talk about faith, games, and convoluted storylines. I'm your nerd, Pastor Nate. I'm so glad to welcome you back for another of these videos. If this is your, your first, fifth, or however many, we're so glad that you're here with us, joining us in these nerdy deep dives into some of your favorite pop culture references. This happens to be one of my new favorite games now that I have just finished it. I'm super excited about it, and I need to share it with you. I need to share it with you. But before we get into that, we always start with our scripture. Our scripture for today is 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 11 through 16. We're going to be reading from the NRSV. That's just my preferred translation. It's what's going to be on the screen. But if you have something else that you prefer to use, feel free to use that as well. For what human being knows what is truly human, except the human spirit that is within? So also no one comprehends what is truly God's, except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. And we speak of these things in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the spirit, interpreting spiritual things to those who are spiritual. Those who are unspiritual do not receive the gifts of God's spirit, for they are foolishness to them. They're unable to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Those who are spiritual discern all things, and they are themselves subject to no one else's scrutiny. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So the game we're going to be talking about today is 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim. This is a video game developed by Vanillaware, who you may know from some of their other games. They also made the game Odin Sphere, Dragon's Crown, all these great games. They barely ever make a game, but when they do, it is just... Mwah. So it was made by Vanillaware and published by Atlas, who you know from the Persona series, for the PlayStation 4. It was released in Japan in November of 2019 and didn't release worldwide until September of 2020. The game itself is divided into side-scrolling action-adventure segments and real-time strategy battles and follows 13 high school students in a fictionalized 1980s Japan that's been dragged into a futuristic war between mechs and hostile kaiju in a non-linear epic narrative. Primarily, 13 Sentinels is being set in 1985 in the Showa period, but it does sometimes jump between 1945, during the later years of World War II, 2025, 2065, and the distant future of 2105, which you will notice are exactly 40 years apart. Hmm, I wonder what that could be about. The storyline itself is split between these characters, and by following each, the player aims to avert that disastrous future. The same location that keeps occurring is Sakura High School, which all of these characters at some point either attend or go near or are within or whatever it may look like. They have some relationship to this high school. The story itself is told in a non-linear format, locking you after you complete a certain amount of adventures within each character, causing you to switch between all the different protagonists and the events leading up to this final battle against a true army of kaiju who are known as Daimos in the game, and they are these giant monsters that arrive in 1985 to attack Japan. Each of the 13 protagonist arcs all end up culminating in summoning a sentinel, which is the mech that they use to fight the Daimos in all of these different time periods, and it allows them to time travel between different eras, maybe? Now, I want to go super light on the spoilers here because I really want you to play this game. Like, genuinely, I need you to play this game. So, I just want to give you just a just a, just a, just a, little, just a little taste of the storyline we're working with here. So, we start with Jiro Karabe, who is a high schooler and an otaku obsessed with kaiju films. He keeps on dreaming that he's actually in these movies. Only, here's the thing, uh, all of his friends are actually having the same dreams. And so, he begins to think, huh, I wonder if these might be real. And along with Iori Fuyasaka, he tries to find out more. Then we have Shu Amaguchi, a high school playboy who gets visited one night by a pop star through his television set who tells him that everything he knows is wrong. 
Or how about Ninji Ogata, the young tough who keeps reliving the same alien invasion over and over and over again on a loop? Or what about Natsuno Minami, who happens to find a robot that she believes to be her own personal E.T.? Or maybe Ryoko Shinonome, who can't remember anything except that she's a time-traveling secret agent who's hunting down a mass murderer prison escapee named 426? Or how about, and this is just a favorite of mine, how about Megumi, who makes a literal contract with a talking cat and becomes a gun-wielding magical girl seeking out a way to have her one true wish granted? Yeah, yeah, no, all of that, all that, the same game, same story. That's all happening at the same time. Plus a couple extras thrown in there to add up to the number 13. This game, folks, literally has it all. Magical girls, time travel, kaiju battles, mechs, romance, love triangles, backstabbing, androids, men in black, aliens, space travel, you name it, they got it. Don't worry, they also give you an encyclopedia because you're gonna need it in this game. This game is an absolute blast, and I fully recommend it for anyone and everyone, but especially if you're into fantasy, sci-fi, or basically any JRPG ever at all. Reviewers seem to give it a pretty solid 8 out of 10, but for me and my family, I think that they're insane and that this game deserves a big old whopping 10. And the reason that it deserves a 10, well, I mean, look, I'm sure that there are plot holes in this story. There have to be plot holes when you're telling this hungry of a storytelling methodology. But for the most part, this story ends up wrapping all the loose ends together and making for a unbelievable, unpredictable, but cohesive ending. And that is actually what relates to our scripture for today and is why we're even talking about this in the first place. Other than the fact that if I don't talk about this game, I'm gonna explode. So the passage for today is from one of the epistles or letters from the Apostle Paul that he wrote to the new church start in Corinth. Paul is really hammering home the difference here between worldly wisdom and divine wisdom. Paul didn't necessarily want to debase and set aside the geniuses of the world by espousing Christianity. Philosophy and science were important to people for a reason. But Paul had to make very clear that what he was offering during his ministry was not conventional book smarts or literature. Those things are all well and good, but what Paul is offering is a certain peek into what he calls divine wisdom, or wisdom that can only come from God and a relationship with God through the Holy Spirit imbued within us. It's by this spirit that Paul finds the words to speak and the wisdom to offer up to the people of Corinth and the other locations of the early church. Paul explains that a literary look at what has happened is not going to really yield any logical results. It doesn't make sense for God to come in the form of a human. It doesn't make sense for God to die on a cross. It doesn't make sense for a human to rise from the dead. None of this makes any sense unless we look at it from an angle of divine wisdom. My favorite way of explaining this look at the Bible and the story that Paul is referring to here was actually crafted by this pastor named Randy Frazee, who wrote a paraphrase of the Bible called The Story. One of Frazee's big theses is that the Bible must be seen from two perspectives. The upper story, which is God's story, the master plan, the finished story tree, the final achievement, the platinum trophy, all that good stuff. And then there's the lower story, which is what is actually happening in time and space as humanity is able to comprehend it. This is our perspective our story that we see and can tangibly touch, write down, and review. This is the 1% achievement. This is the first bronze trophy you unlock. We only get to see the very surface level of the iceberg. That's why, for as important as the Bible is, a relationship with God is so much more important for understanding more than just these pages and words. Make no mistake, there is an upper story going on and it's working towards its own thing. Paul explains that when we receive the Holy Spirit and try to approach things from an air of divine wisdom, we can get little tiny peaks behind the curtain. We can start to see the edges of what's really happening here. And here is where things, as always, begin to get sticky. If we can start to see the edges, then we can start to get cocky and believe that we have some kind of right or understanding or confusion that allows us to tell God what God can and cannot do. Sometimes this takes the form of seemingly positive phrases, such as the true bane of my existence, everything happens for a reason. Sometimes it happens to take on a more obviously harmful form, like predictions of the end times, or telling others that God will only bless them if they give money to this church and this pastor for prosperity. We can sometimes trick ourselves into thinking that we know way more than we actually do, or that we control way more than we actually do. The reality here is, like Paul, who knows so much to tell the Lord what to do? In more familiar terms, we think of the phrase, God's ways are not our ways. God's thoughts, uh, not our thoughts. And yeah, that sucks sometimes. Let's be real about it. But here's the good news, and here's how all of this ties together. In the end, 
We've already seen the Platinum Trophy. We already know the big spoiler, the plot twister. It's been untwisted, baby. This lower story that we're living, it can be really great. It can be really awful. It can be really happy. It can be really sad. But if we accept a relationship with Jesus and lean into that divine wisdom, then we can know that no matter what happens, we're heading towards perfection. We're heading towards something greater than the greatest thing we've ever experienced. The pains that we find along the way, God didn't make them happen, but God is with us throughout the entire thing. If only we'll reach out and grab on. The good news is that this story all ties together in the end. It may feel like way more than just 13 plot lines at once, but rest assured, the greatest storyteller of all time will make do with each and every story that we weave and make the most amazing sci-fi fantasy whatever story ever told. We just gotta keep playing, mashing that X button, and trying our best not to get a bad end. So. Let's explore the story tree together here at Checkpoint Church. Join our party, clam up. Let's see how an awesome God ties all of our stories together. And yeah, I'm calling dibs on the magical girl storyline. Folks, thank you so much for taking the time and indulging me in this fascination with 13 Sentinels in this game that I've played. I really enjoyed it. I would love for you to play it as well. It is so much fun. I cannot recommend it highly enough. This is just my... Ah, it's so good. If you're wanting to know more about us and more about what we do, feel free to join us and get to know us better on our Discord. We're posting there regularly, daily. I'm on there most of the time. We always have somebody on there, so you are welcome there anytime. Feel free to join that. Link's down in the description down below. Or if you want to join us, we are streaming four days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday over on twitch.tv slash checkpointchurch. With that, folks, I'm going to go ahead and try and find a Sentinel to get into, and I hope that you all have a wonderful rest of your day and a great start to your week. I look forward to seeing you all again next week in this video. Until then, be well. Know that God loves you, I love you, and you matter. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye! Ooh, Yemen! Yemen, that's straight up a country. Y'all, this is an old man Pikachu. <laughs> this is an old man Peaky. Look at this old Pikachu. Oh boy, look at you. You're old. You're old, old man. I love him. I need this old man Pikachu in my life.